Good morning, Colfax, and welcome back to the show for April 26th. It's been a couple of busy weeks since our last show, so we're here to update you on everything that's happened and everything coming up as the end of the year comes into sight. Today we travel into the community with Lily Nellis in our new segment Around Town. We spotlight a high-flying athlete in Shaylin Ackerman comes to us from the sports stage where we dive into our spring sports update. Welcome to the show. Last night, Colfax celebrated seniors with a four-year cumulative GPA of 3.75 or higher at the annual Alpha Omega Academic Honor Society Dinner. Congrats to the 38 scholars who earned that Alpha Omega distinction. It's exciting to see four years of hard work pay off. I heard the student introductions by our teachers were awesome. Speaking of hard work, leadership is still at it, working to squeeze in multiple events to close out the year. That's right. Last week, prom tickets went on sale, and they will be selling them this week for $60. Next week, prices go up for $65, and sales end Wednesday, May 4th. Prom will be held at the stunning Hidden Farms Outdoor Facility in Auburn on May 7th from 8 to 11 o'clock. That's not all that leadership is brewing up. Next Tuesday, May 3rd, in celebration of our juniors' testing efforts, all the students who will be taking AP and IB tests, they will be hosting a carnival. The carnival will be held during a special flex lunch schedule and feature classic games like bottle ring toss, a water gun shooting gallery, dart toss, nerf gun game, bucket ball toss, and so much more. Don't want to chase tickets for the prize raffle? You can check out free face painting, get some balloon art twisted up for you, or tour the many food booths provided by multiple clubs. It's all free other than the food booths, so bring a few bucks. I'm definitely looking forward to this event and specifically root beer floats. It's going to serve as a great way for the juniors to wind down after a week of CASP testing and for us to all connect, relax, and have some fun before IB testing and finals prep. Plus, I do love a good Just Dance battle. It is definitely going to be fun. And at the same time, the peer mentors will be hosting a mental health resource fair where students can learn about co local agencies and all the resources they offer for students as well as investigate volunteer opportunities. Fun and thoughtful. I'll see you out there, Glenn. High school students are always looking for fun and interesting things to do in our local region, and sometimes it can be hard to find. To highlight some of what our region has to offer, CTV has this new segment around town. This week, we join Lily Nellis in downtown Colfax, where she shows us a little gem. Hey there Colfax, welcome to the very first episode of Around Town. Today we'll be looking into a new shop in downtown Colfax called Created For You By Us and learning the art of jewelry making. This shop, owned by Catherine Tenorio, is full of handcrafted items from people in our community. Her dream? to bring the community together and encourage participants to take pride in their creativity. This shop has something for everyone, from lessons to crafts to DIYs, while they also provide lessons in soap making, painting, floral projects, fabric dyeing, and clay working, today we are going to focus on learning how to wire wrap rocks and crystals. First, the process began with choosing one stone or crystal with a hole, and one without, called the cabochon. I chose the amethyst crystal for my cabochon and a piece of aqua jasper with a hole for my second piece. Next, we chose the gauge and finish of the wire that we thought would look best with the rock we were using. For the amethyst, I went with a shiny finished copper wire, and for my jasper, I used copper wire with a distressed finish. After making my selections, Kat led me through the process of wrapping each stone and taught me how to use all of the tools, along with several techniques in wire wrapping. Both were finished off with a copper chain, and we had our final result. This was an incredible experience, and I got to go home with two beautiful new necklaces. I highly recommend this class to anyone who likes jewelry or trying new things. With so many personal touches and affordable handmade products, this shop makes for a great activity with friends, family gatherings, or even by yourself. The cost? $35 for the lesson and your two necklaces. To sign up for the lesson or browse other classes, go to the store's website, www.createdforyoubyus.com, or go see Cat in the store. 
Well, cool facts, that's all I have for you on this wonderful store. If you have any ideas of local activities or businesses to highlight, please email me at nellistl22 at puhsd.k12.ca.us and stay tuned for next week's episode of Around Town with Katie Marks. With camera op Kylie Powell, I'm Lily Nellist, and this has been Around Town. What a cool opportunity to do fun art projects. Find and or make a unique gift. Being around in town makes it even better. I agree. Our Falcon athletes have been hard at work since our last show, and CTV has been tracking all the exciting developments. Shaylin Ackerman has this week's sports update. Thank you, Glenn, and welcome back to the CTV sports update. Three weeks ago, we took a look at track and field's undefeated start to league and got mid-season updates from all of our spring sports. Today, I'll get you all caught up with our teams in the PVL as we begin to set our sights on playoffs. The golf team continued to dominate the PVL over spring break and beat second place 12 bridges by 100 strokes at the first All-PVL tournament. Freshman star golfer Giacomo Guguero is on a tear, shooting one to three strokes over par consistently. Coach Kovic has his team focus and expects to stay undefeated with matches against Bear River and Marysville remaining before the final All-PVL tournament. Kovic and the Falcons look forward to making a run in the section playoffs starting on May 9th. The swim team just finished their run in the PVL, and reporter Megan Town gives us the rundown on the girls' and boys' team's impressive league finishes. The swim season came to an end last week at the Pioneer Valley League Championship on Thursday and Friday. Going into the meets, both the girls' and boys' teams were seeded second in the league to Bear River, expecting to go into finals maintaining that ranking. In the hopes of setting personal records and making section qualifying times, both teams swam impressive races, resulting in a surprise PVL championship for the girls and a close second place for the boys. In relays, where teams can gain some of their biggest points, the boys' medley relay took first and the girls' medley relay took second. Both 200-yard freestyle relay teams also took second. All four relay teams were mere seconds from setting section qualifying times. Freshman Jada Moore took first in the girls' 50-yard freestyle and the 100-yard breaststroke, qualifying her for the section championships. Senior Tyler Bellieza won the boys' 50 free, sophomore Ethan McCoy won the 100-yard freestyle, and both the boys' and girls' teams gained points with over 20 second, third, and fourth place finishes. The season is officially over, with the exception of Jada Moore, who will represent Colfax in the section meet in May. What an awesome end to the season. Congratulations to the girls' swim team on the league championship, and good luck to Jada Moore at the section meet. With wins over Bear River, Center, and most recently Lindhurst, the Colfax tennis team has cemented their spot in the playoffs and a share of the PVL title. With the team's most recent success, Coach Charles Luke believes that the team can make a successful swing into the section playoffs. This team plays Marysville at home before going to Marysville for the PVL championship tournament tomorrow. Colfax just recently hosted the 32nd annual Colfax Track and Field Invitational, where 24 schools and over 2,000 athletes competed. In PVL action, the boys' and girls' teams remain undefeated at 12-0. Contributing to the team's PVL success is team captain Daniel Bittner and Carly McCabe, who are both ranked number one in the 800-meter and 1600-meter races, along with Peter Molino, who is number one in shot put and discus. Last Saturday was the annual Sacramento Meet of Champions, where the top athletes from Northern California and parts of Nevada compete in one of two meets taking place during the day and evening. During the day, senior Kelly McCarty became the fastest 400-meter runner in school history, breaking the record of 59.76 seconds, running a 59.6. McCarty also raced as a member of the girls' 4x4 team, along with junior Carly McCabe, freshman Emma Menth, and freshman Kaya Diedrichs, who set a new PR of 4 minutes 11 seconds. In the prestigious evening meet, senior Luke Green was one of eight athletes who qualified for the triple jump and landed a jump of 43 feet 2 inches. Out of seven pole vaulters, sophomore Nate Reinhardt also competed in the evening meet. This is one of many of Reinhardt's accomplishments this season, and reporter Bethany Gadway caught up with the high-flying sophomore in this story. An underclassman Falcon has recently captured the attention of Colfax High School by soaring over a school track and field record, literally and figuratively. 16-year-old Nathan Reinhardt is currently fourth in the state for sophomores in pole vaulting and has recently broken the Colfax sophomore record of 13 feet. Nathan attributes his success to a simple trait. I'm successful because I just put in the work. It's a lot of work to, you know, get better. 
Hard work is key in Nathan's sport, but having some help from coach Casey Burlingham, a 2009 Division II national collegiate champion, is giving him an opportunity to take his vaulting to the next level. In 2004, I, I went over to Cuesta College and, and along the way with, with Jan Johnson, um, he ran a club called Sky Jumpers Vertical Sports Club, so I started coaching his camps and things like that with him. Um, and then when, when I transferred from, from Quest to the community college I went to, to Stanislaus, I, I coached for the local high school over there, Houston High School. Um, and then I, I stayed there until about 2012 and then um, moved over to Arizona with uh, Dean Starkey at Arizona Pole Vault Academy. And he kind of, he has a thing where um, the elite guys he, co he coaches, um, coach in order to kind of pay their coaching fees and, and things like that. So I, I coached for him uh, from 2013 to 2017 and then, and then came over here. Working closely with Casey, Nathan practices every day after school for several hours while also finding time to maintain his 4.0 GPA in his classes. Nathan has been pole vaulting for only one year and has a high ceiling with two years to go in his high school career. I hope to achieve the school record and maybe get a scholarship to a school depends on how good I do. <laughs> Nathan's dream school is Cal Poly, and Coach Burlingham believes he is capable of meeting and exceeding his goals. Um, I, I think sky's the limit. If he, if he keeps working like he is, the, the biggest thing is probably going to be as long as we can keep him uninjured and, and things like that. Um, I'm, my hope for any of my athletes is, is to get him a scholarship to college to, to pull vault for that, and that's if Nate continues at this trajectory, and th that's what I see for him. Um, he set the sophomore record last week, which is honestly probably our best track and field record of, of any record. Is, I would say that sophomore pole vault record would have been the hardest one. The school record for pole vault is 15 feet 7 inches, set by Preston Sladek two years ago in his senior year. And with Nathan establishing a personal best of 14-3, it seems almost impossible that he will not launch himself to even greater heights. Reporting for CTV, I'm Bethany Gadway with camera ops and editor Megan Town and Jay Patterson. It's going to be exciting to see what Nathan does over the next two years. On the softball diamond, our girls were rained out last week but have a combined 1-2 marks in their last three games. The win came in the way of a 23-0 drubbing of Foothill. In that game, three pitchers, Emma Gali, Sofia Chavez, and Rylan Morales combined for the no-hitter shutout. On the offensive side, both Sabrina Williams and Mallory Musloff hit th triples, helping the Falcons put up big run totals. This week, the team will face off once again with Foothill on Tuesday, before facing league-leading Marysville at Marysville on Thursday. On the mound, our baseball team has had an exciting couple of weeks, and reporter Sebastian Blondeau has this update. Over spring break, the Colfax baseball team made their way to San Diego, where the team played Pacific Ridge, Chula Vista, and San Diego High. All wins, landing them in the tournament championship against, of all teams, PVL leader Marysville. The Indians ace pitcher Stevie Cherry kept the Colfax bats at bay, winning 3-1. to one. The Falcons bounced back with an 11-1 to one stopping of Linters and are 9-1 and one in April. The Falcons are only one game back of Marysville in the PVL championship race and will finish the season with back-to-back -back games against the Indians. That's all I have for you this week, Falcons. Next week, we'll take a look at some exciting PVL contests and see how our teams are doing in the postseason. Until next time, I'm Shailen Ackerman for the CTV Sports Update. Way to go, Falcons. CTV can't wait to see what happens in the postseason. While we're on the topic of sports, one of the most exciting sporting events of the year is just around the corner. It's the Junior versus Senior Powder Puff game. The annual football showdown between the juniors and seniors is slated for May 23rd, but you have to sign up this week in order to play and get your custom jersey t-shirt. It costs $20 to play and you get a custom t-shirt with the new Rosie Bowl logo and your name and number on the back. I will get to see my first Powder Puff game, and I heard that it's intense. Can't wait. Seniors, the Unification Assembly and Pennant Parade are just around the corner, so please check your email and fill out the form that lets leadership know your post-graduation plans. Depending on what you're doing, leadership will order and make flags and pennants so you can walk with your classmates, but time is of the essence, so please fill out your form today.
That's all we have for you this week, Colfax. Next week, reporters Megan Town and Shailen Ackerman explore a unique aspect of the Colfax school community. And I get out in the community for CTV's second Around Town. Until then, I'm Glenn Hooker for Katie Marks. Have a great day, Colfax.